Hello and welcome to the Forza Horizon 4 Update 2 live stream. I'm Mike Brown and I'm joined on the sofa today by Retro Crystal, our community liaison, and making his uh, Playground Games live stream debut, Mr. Torben Ellert. Um, so it's been four weeks since our, uh, since our previous uh, live stream when we did our launch day stream. Since then, uh, Retro, uh, <laughs> what, how, how have you found the game since then? 
Uh, the game's been amazing. We've had a lot of positive uh, feedback from the community, a lot of interesting ideas as well, which we are taking on board. Um, it's lovely to see everyone get together as well. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of streams with team adventures, convoys, people, you know, joining together, which is, is really nice to see. And Torben, we're going to be taking a look ahead at the next four weeks now. Is there anything you're super excited about to show people? Uh, yes, uh, all of it, actually. Uh, but two things, uh, really. Uh, Root Creator, something that we've been working on for feels like several games, um, and an entirely new story that we're going to be showing off uh, today. Yeah, so we just take a quick look at what's coming up. Uh, first up, we're going to take a look at the Horizon Halloween Party. There's a bunch of new character cosmetics, and we'll talk through the different ways that you'll be able to unlock them. Uh, we have a brand new Horizon story called British Racing Green, and our most community requested feature, I think, ever, uh, Root Blueprint, which we'll spend a good time looking at later and get everyone super excited for. So, shall we jump right in? Uh, Retro, if you take the, take the wheel. Um, first up, so coming up this month, obviously it's Halloween. We've got a, uh, a pumpkin on the table to show that we're getting in the spirit. Uh, in game, there'll be a bunch of uh, challenges, activities that players will be able to take part in. Uh, we're going to have custom season events that Torben assures me are filled with loads of really uh, witty Halloween jokes, uh, aka awful puns. <laughs> All that. Um, and, <laughs> and from taking part in those, you'll be able to win loads of new cosmetic <laughs> items. So. Uh, Karina, let's like, we start with hats. I think that's uh, usually hats? the hats guy. People love a hat. So, go on, Karina, yeah. take us through what so, we've yeah. got. So, at the moment, we've got our Halloween themed hats. We've got our witch's hat, uh, got the uh, clown mask. Uh, we've also got the police hats, and one of my most favourite ones, which is up and coming, we have the pumpkin hat. Uh, for those that uh, don't won't know, uh, what happens is as well, alongside with the pumpkin hat, we have the. I'm going to go straight to outfit. Uh, which I probably shouldn't have done. Uh, I'm going to go to the skeleton morph suit. So both uh, the skeleton and the pumpkin hat, they glow in the dark. So if you do go to nighttime... Of course nighttime, they glow in the dark. Of course, why not? Like, you know. Uh, so yeah, if you do go into nighttime at any point within your game, you uh, it just glows up. And I'm actually really excited to see a lot of photos. I mean, we do get a lot of photos from the community, but we've never had any glow in the dark ones. Yeah, so there's some more. There's, there's an, you can be an alien, great. There's Green Man. Green Man! I'm told this is from... Always sunny or something? Yes. Yeah, I'm not down with that one. No, no. Uh, <laughs> unlike some of us. Uh, yeah, you can dress it like a you can dress it like a cop, uh, which is we're already seeing a lot of like sort of community content, photos, videos mm -hmm. being made where one person pretends to be a police car. So we thought we'd react to that and give those guys a little bit of extra role play they can get mm -hmm. involved in. Um, and as I said, all of these will be available to unlock through completing Fortnite challenges mm -hmm. and through uh, Fortnite shop. Fortnite shop and through season events. Uh, you should make sure you get them now, though, because once they've been up, they will then be dropping into wheel spin. At which some make, point, at some point in the future, they will reappear in wheel spin. But at that point, you'll be, you'll then be at the whims of the wheel spin gods, mm -hmm. and uh, who knows whether you'll, you'll, you'll be able to get them or not. Um, I wanted to take that point actually to just talk a little about wheel spin um, because. A I don't know if you've noticed, but some people online, they, they like, complain about getting clothing and stuff. Um, they seem to think the wheel spin's a bit stingy. Yeah, they think it's stingy. And I just wanted to like, clarify some points on that, because it, it's really not. Um, and wheel and spin... this guy should know, he, he actually weights everything that goes into the wheel spin. <laughs> don't tell them that, that's going to get me killed. <laughs> 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 um, but in Forza Horizon 4, you, are, you get more money than you would have got in Horizon 3. You get more cars than you would have got in Horizon 3. Mm. More expensive cars as well, uh, more often. Um, and we've, we've doubled down on that as well with, you know, the, the clothing items and stuff, so you, can, so you can dress your avatar to really reflect your personality or to wear a glittery chicken suit if that's your bag. Um, but I just wanted to kind of get a message out there that um, you shouldn't feel aggrieved when you win a, a pair of pink plimsolls because overall you're actually doing much better than you would have done in Horizon 3. I think that's a good opportunity now for us to perhaps talk about um, the fact that we have, we have been listening to the community all the way through development. I think since we've shipped, um, uh, Retro is our community liaison and spends all of her waking hours uh, trolling the uh, Forza forums, uh, the yes. Forza Reddit, um, and, and our Twitter page, picking up all those things that people are reporting. And we're really happy to announce that um, in the update that goes live today in just a few hours, as well as these big features we've been talking about, uh, we're also going to be addressing some of those big complaints that the community have had. So um, people complained about some of the engine audio wasn't sounding exactly like it should. Um, we've addressed that. That'll be going live later on. Um, we've added the option to to quit from a from a team adventure session. So previously, um, once you were in, we, we really felt that you should stay in team adventure um, for as, for as long as possible. Um, but don't worry, you'll you'll actually be able to quit that now when you've when you've had enough. Um, some people will have complained about Fortnite challenges. Progress would reset, so we've asked you to get 
2 million uh, scale points or 7 million scale points, and then there were certain activities you could do that would reset that counter. It was frustrating, but I think people will be happy to hear that we've, we've fixed that issue now. And we've also, uh, again, some people were completing season events, were completing the trial. Uh, they weren't receiving those rewards, um, and that's, that's fixed as well. So those will all be going live uh, within the next few hours. And on that theme, I suppose, uh, within the next few weeks, there are some other things as well that we are looking to address. Uh, a big one that has bothered me, to be honest, is uh, in photo mode, oftentimes other cars can appear in ghost, yeah. you know, ghosted state. So you enter photo mode and they're ghosted and it kind of ruins your photo. So we'll be fixing that so that they'll, they'll go solid. So but that's photo only in photo mode, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. So the auto-ghost system that stops you from being interfered with other people is untouched. But in photo mode, because that auto system was actually making your photos not look as cool, mm. uh, we're fixing that issue. Um, some other cool stuff upcoming is a fix for, again, some people were finding that once they'd found all the barn finds, um, the achievement wasn't popping, which was you know, pretty, pr pretty frustrating. It, it didn't happen to everyone, which is how come we haven't seen it in a development environment. But um, again, that'll be fixed very soon, as will um, some of the issues surrounding the activity panel. Uh, difficulty for people getting in games, people like finding enough people to get into games. All those on our radar over the next few weeks should be getting out live to you. Uh, that's enough about bugs and stuff. We should probably take a look at what's actually new and fun and awesome. Yes, new content. <coughs> uh, so, uh, as we said, uh, there are two uh, big um, items of content we're sticking into the game. One of them is an entirely new Horizon story uh, called British Racing Green, which is what we're going to take a look at now. So for those who don't know, Torben, it's probably worth looking at what is a Horizon story. Right, right. So a Horizon story is... Uh, a set of missions, really, to kind of put it in its simplest possible terms. It's, uh, it's a challenge to go and do something fun that's related to cars. Uh, in the base game, you've already been a stunt driver, and you have driven some of the world's fastest cars, and you've done drifting. But now, we're going to be uh, participating in creating a documentary about great British cars, a century of automotive excellence in the UK, mm -hmm. which is where the name British Racing Green comes from. So I, I think let's take a look at the first chapter of this, uh, which great. is uh, called Second Century. And uh, we'll shut up and you guys can listen. See how I drive. <laughs> <coughs> Hopefully it won't be as bad as uh, the last time. Hopefully I can drive a little bit better. Uh, so let's great to see you. head off with that. We're shooting a documentary about car culture in the UK and I need a second driver. You've made a name for yourself, and it would be great to have you aboard. It's simple. You drive, I tell the story. Let's do it. Let's go. So that was the voice of Rebecca, right? Yes. So, so um, the, the, the concept of the story is Rebecca is uh, filming a documentary about uh, 100 years of, uh, of the automobile industry in the UK. And she needs a driver so that uh, she can tell the story and someone else can Aston be the stick. And the stick today, of course, McLaren without white helmet, Benzie. is... Uh, uh, um, over a century of automotive so the purpose of this race uh, is to Bengals. essentially keep your speed. Is, is there a reason for that? Or is that just a new mode that you, you felt was, uh, you know, that's what everyone was after? And to be honest, it's quite fun if I don't run into fences like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, as much as everyone likes the to run into Aston the walls Martin, and fences, I definitely, most definitely would advise against that for your speed. Yeah. So, um... A big thing British in the British Racing Green story is actually comparing uh, usually an older British car against a more modern variant of it. And obviously we're looking at the Vantage here, uh, which was a really quick car for its age. I mean, it would do a good 160 miles an hour back in the 60s. And the gameplay, as we're seeing here, is basically uh, tagging into that. You have to stay above 70. Uh, and as we get to uh, the second part of the story and we see the more modern version of this car, uh, that objective will change a little bit more. I think it feeds back into that, that central theme, isn't it? In the, the idea here being that you're creating a documentary, so you want to have loads of shots of the car moving really, really fast, so they can, so the, 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 the imaginary editing, editorial team that have got to chop up this footage and make a, make a documentary out of it have got really good really stuff to work with. Blistering yeah. top speed of 162 oh. miles an hour in 1964. You just said I know, I know. It, <laughs> almost as if I knew what you were going to say. Um, I mean, it was, it, was, it was really, really... Yeah. And she's talking again. I mean, I really think that Ophelia did a, a really solid job with this. Yes, so Rebecca is voiced by uh, Ophelia Lovibond, um, who, who, yeah, you, as you're right, you, as you say, did a really great job with this character. It's always a difficult thing for us when we I won't have any of the characters in the game. Because uh, as soon as they need to talk with authority about cars and car mm. culture, um, people can sniff it a mile off when the person doesn't really know what they're talking about. And I think that's because people are so used to watching Top Gear and watching whoever their favourite car YouTuber mm. might be, uh, who live and breathe cars, and they talk about cars in a way which, which carries authority. 
uh, which can be difficult with when you get an actor because they perhaps don't know about cars. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think Ophelia does a really, really great this job here, feeling totally believable that she could be on the a BBC range. documentary. And I suppose this is definitely one of my favourite, because as, as you can see in the background, you can see all the mountains, uh, the lake. I mean, it'd be interesting to see uh, this happen in you know, all sorts of seasons, but it's uh, definitely a picturesque route. Absolutely. Yes, one of the great things about stories, actually, is that they you can play them in in every season and get a pretty different experience out of them all as well. Because torben has gone through and picked and, picked and chosen beautiful drives with be beautiful times a day. Um, he's probably had to also do that four times. So uh. you own one. You own <laughs> I must admit the most uh, interesting thing about this type of race is oh no car back off one minute no 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 oh wow I would definitely rewind up that. yeah. <laughs> Uh, as I was saying, the best part about this is how you've got to decide how to take the road. Because, for example, you, you know, anything like that could happen around the corner. Mm -hmm. You've got to decide whether you just put the throttle down and go for it. Oh, wow, I'm still... Thank you. Um, or just, you know, to take it easy. But the thing is, because you do need to go over a certain mile per hour, it, you know, essentially mm -hmm. puts that little rush into it. But that's what makes the, these type of stories so good. Yeah. And we use this gameplay mechanic uh, as well in the World's Fastest uh, storyline. And it's really interesting that something so simple actually becomes so compelling be immortalized in half mm -hmm. a century of cinema so while Rebecca's talking there Tom, uh, we've got a question from Tundra Frost 24 uh, will there be more businesses in the future there absolutely will be can you, just, um, can you yes speak? don't say too much but um, uh, I would like to reference the fact that uh, you can pick people up and take them places very very fast mm -hmm. so uh, obviously we shipped for horizon stories mm -hmm. uh, we're adding another one now uh, in update uh, update two. Um, I mean, what are the, what are the plans in the future? How, do, how many more do you imagine we might add? Well, uh, I think that uh, there is really a huge amount of scope for us to add new stories. There are so many different aspects of car culture that we can explore. I mean, we've we, we've got a we've, we've got a, a good uh, a good set of ideas that we want to explore um, and release over the uh, over the coming months uh, into the game. I mean, uh, I obviously don't want to lock in and. Of and promise any kind of number because that's one of the things with live games you need to be a bit careful of that but I mean I would definitely uh, hope to bring stories about taxis and deliveries and all kinds of really fun things and actually what we're seeing here now with uh, with, with this story is, is kind of the really the the, the gameplay kind of the, the top level concept for this story which is before and after so we were doing the vantage uh, we were doing the, the vantage first where we where we had to stay above 70 and now we're in the DB11 and it's a hundred so uh, you do, you definitely get a, 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 an opportunity to kind of compare and contrast the cars mm -hmm. and, and get a sense of, of, of what they are. And I mean, we were talking about it before, but the, this is... Look at that, that's even, that's better than before, picture-wise. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is a great area. So we're just at the uh, West of the here in the Lake District, mm. um, which is, is stunningly beautiful. I think there's a great moment in a moment where we sort of leave this yeah, here shadowed comes. area. There it is, there it is. Oh, oh. Break it, break it. there we go. No, lost that. I think you're okay. <laughs> I'm about to say, I was a bit. I was like, do I go for it? I'm too. Uh, I'm too careful my like. Well, I say careful my driving, but I'm too cautious. There we go. Let's get back to 100 miles per hour. Okay, get it back on the asphalt. Get those. Going. There we go. There we go. We got it. We got it. Nice. <laughs> nice. This, is, this is the first time Tobin's having second thoughts about using this challenge. <laughs> Well, I mean, I've done this. <laughs> given, given how often I've had to drive this, and I, I think originally the speed limit along here was 130. 130? Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and we very quickly decided that was perhaps just a little bit unnecessary. But then, I mean, the British Racing Green was, was, was kind of where we started prototyping a lot of the things that we put into storms later. Uh, something we used internally to, to show off the... Go, 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 go. There you go. <laughs> I know that was close. <laughs> One of the things we, we showed off in, internally to, to help everyone understand exactly what this would be. Aston Martin is ready for another oh, century of you're okay, you're okay. Oh, water. And I can't wait. I like that this documentary team felt the need to drive this it's very, very expensive yes, car through a foot of water. Foot of water. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 I don't know, two yes. in a corner. Yes. I, I think you're uh, heading for a dramatic uh, corkscrew cliff. <laughs> Exciting ending. There we go. There we go. Let's finish this straight. Towards the viaduct. There we go. Beautiful as they are, Aston there Martins we go. are only one of many cars made in the United Kingdom. Let's see what else is out there. Ah, three stars. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's actually something that we... <laughs> just move. <laughs> yes, she seems as surprised as we are. But that's actually something that we do with, uh, with the first chapter on the story generally, is we... It's, it's a presentation of what the concept is. So generally the difficulty isn't set particularly aggressively on the first chapter of most stories. Mm -hmm. So, uh, guys at home, um, we, have got some we have got some codes for some uh, in-game clothing items which we are giving away on our Instagram page, which is at We Are Playground Games. And if you head over to our Twitter account, which is at We Are Playground Games, uh, we are giving away some Ultimate Edition codes as well. So if you don't yet own Forza Horizon 4, there is an opportunity for you to get hold of it on our Twitter page. Um, are we going to do another chapter of that? Uh, sure. Let's yeah, you uh, want to do another chapter? Yeah. Okay, so if you just hit continue here, and then solo, and then go chapter select. What chapter should we do? Uh, let's, see. let's do number 37. Yeah, let's go for that one. Yes, this is about the, uh, uh, the, the, the runner-up in the car of the century. Ooh. Is that actually what the story's about? Yes. Uh -huh. We're almost done. <coughs> But we it saved the good stuff. Was that, no, no, it was, it was, it was <laughs> number two. Yeah. Voted the, most the next British best car of the 20th all. century. Get in, strap in, and let's nail uh, this one. one. Was, uh, you sound almost bitter about it. <laughs> 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 no, uh, Rebecca, Rebecca channels my bitterness about that. It is quite fairly considered one of the oh, most okay, influential cars of the century. It's a surprisingly spacious little city car with a side-mounted engine. Fine, I'll just corner clock. It's an icon yeah, it's all good. popular cult. It's a purpose, right? It's mm -hmm. been built. But the, the gameplay here is to uh, stay on the surface, so you need to keep this uh, oh. just on roads in particular. Oh, just man. as long as it's roads. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I do have a lot of fun just cutting across the, uh, the fields. Oh, and and as, as we've seen on screen, <laughs> people have... Be no, it wasn't, it wasn't about you. Uh, people have uh, worked out that often there are shortcuts in stories, and if you're cunning with how you take them, you can actually use that as a way to really find the lead ball. I must say, I've seen some uh, a few videos out there of people like narrowly uh, missing trees and things like that. Uh, ah, chickens! Never mind. <laughs> Let's try that again. Not the last time a mini would. At Monte Carlo in 1966, avoid the chickens. minis took the first, second, and third positions. They were all disqualified because they had dimming headlamps. Not because oh. they were winning everything in sight. We're losing in this 1999, it's fine. It's fine. the Car of the Century Award was presented so, uh, to the most retro. influential uh, car of Geezer the Funny points century. out that you were at the Fort Rossi on Sunday. I was. Um, how, was how was that? That was a, It was pretty amazing. So for those that don't know, the Forza RC is the Forza Racing Championships for uh, Forza Motorsport. Wow, I am just absolutely... Oh, it's finished. It's okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> just got away with that. And, uh, well, I'll, I'll drive the next bit and you can uh, talk yep. about that. So uh, the Forza yeah, RC, yeah, yeah, so it was the eSports Championships, got to watch the semi-finals and finals. Uh, the top three were G2 Lage, uh, Noble Box, and, and uh, Mitch, who came the top BMW three in the Forza Championships. They the drove, it was immense. Life. There was a lot yeah, of, uh, there wasn't too much battling between everyone, but you could feel the tension in the audience. The mm. uh, but it was, very, it was so good to watch and just see uh, all the drivers being so competitive and knowing that some of them only started essentially like last year or the year before and to see them grow like across the series of the championships it was very it was nice to just you know observe that and i got to talk to a few of the drivers and they're, they're really lovely people so yeah i had a I had a fantastic time at the the racing championships yeah, so that was down in london wasn't it? that was the yes. that was the first one they've done in front of a, a live like stadium audience yeah, yeah. as well yeah so um pretty exciting so uh, the second part of this is uh, more about what what minis turn into uh, <laughs> Once, uh, once, uh, once the mark was, uh, once production was restarted on the mark. This is uh, the the, the X-ray, which uh, Rebecca is telling us all about, and uh, uh, the absolute Dakar madness that it was designed for. The Mini's X-ray division set out to build this thing. They had one goal in mind: winning the Dakar, and they did every year from 2012 to 2015. So yeah, I think that this, this story actually has a, has a good chance of teaching people a thing or two about cars, doesn't it? It's got quite a lot of really... It taught me a bunch about cars. <laughs> you mean you didn't just have a little knowledge? No, no. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, damn, 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 missed the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I researched the hell out of it, and it was actually a huge amount of fun. 
Yeah, and that's the thing about uh, Fox series, is most of the cars in the game actually have mm. a pretty interesting story as to why they're included in the game, which isn't always clear. It can just be like, oh, there are. Oh, there's loads of cards, and almost everyone has, has a, a reason for being there. It's not just, they're not just picked, picked on accident. <coughs> so, I mean, the British Racing Green uh, will be in the story, in the update. It unlocks at level 50, uh, and as you can see, was uh, accessible in the hallway on the south of the map. How many chapters does it have? There are 10 chapters. Each chapter features two cars, though. So it's actually 20 solid two chapters. Things to do. Yes. Cool. Nice. Um, Okay, uh, guys, we are going to take a look at the uh, Forza Horizon 4 launch event that took place at Goodwood a few weeks ago. Uh, we'll be back in a few seconds, but don't go anywhere. Welcome to Goodwood House, the home of the festival speed and the launch of Forza Horizon 4. Joined by Ben Penrose. Good to see you, Brian. Right? Hey, we have so much to show off. Mm -hmm. I say we head straight to the house and get started. Let's do it. We're here in the game PlayStation where tons of people are going to be playing Forza Horizon 4 in the next few days. Absolutely, yes. We've got some great station set up here as well. So people are going to be playing Team Adventure. Real people playing the game, not just us from the studio. So it's going to be great seeing people's reactions and seeing how much fun they're having with this, uh, this awesome setup we've got. But we have even cooler stuff happening in the next room, so let's go check that out. <laughs> you might not think it, but this is actually still in the Goodwood house. If you've ever played Forza on a sled like this, you know it's the ultimate experience for Forza Horizon 4. It's got the pneumatics, you feel every bump, every season, you're feeling it right now. Absolutely, and some of the seasons are gonna throw you around a fair amount as well. But we've got one room that most people can't get into, but Ben and I can. It's the streaming studio. What do you say, let's go check it let's out. Let's go check it out. Well, we're here in the studio, and we're going to be using the studio soon. We're going to have a mm -hmm. special stream with you and Chris and Fraser from Playground Games. And this is where Inside Xbox is going to be filmed as well. Ben and I have to get work. Ben needs a lot of makeup. So let's get that started right now. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Actually, it's you. <laughs> oh. That looked awesome. Um, I never actually got a chance to go down to Goodwood, but at Retro, you went down, didn't you? How, how was that? It seems like you go to all the events I that I, I don't just, get to go to. I just go to everything. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Goodwood was absolutely amazing. Uh, the best bit was we got to get involved with the content creators and meet everyone there. I met a lot of the community for the first time, which was really nice. Uh, to see them. Uh, we got to see the amazing events that went on. So as most people know, Forza Horizon 4 is based about the seasons. Seasons change everything. And at Goodwood, they had, a, they had a rally section and it was all kitted out. You had your summer, your spring, your autumn, your winter, and there was actors involved. It was really lovely to see everyone getting involved with that and uh, taking part in that. And yeah, it was, it was really nice. Did you get to drive any cars? Unfortunately not, but I did get to sit in the centre and I'm more than happy with that. <laughs> That'll do me. That'll do me. <laughs> okay, great. So, uh, next up, we are going to take a look at the most fan-requested feature I think we've ever had. And as I touched on earlier, it's, it's a feature that we at Playground have really wanted to, to get into for a long, long time. It is the uh, Root Creator. Um, I'm going to hand over to Torben now, I think. Uh, <coughs> Thanks, Mike. Great. If uh, Retro you drive, Torben, you talk us through what's going on. So yeah, uh, as you said, Mike, this is, uh, I think, one of the most requested features in the game. And it's something that has we've been working on, I don't know, felt like we were trying to do it for three, and we tried to do it for four, and uh, we, we've now done it, and have actually put it into the game and, and gotten it working. And it is, I think, a really powerful but really simple solution for how to make roots in it's, the... It's certainly simple uh, for the things that the player needs to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> in, in terms, of, in terms of, of what's involved behind the scenes with uh, creating a route and then optimizing it for, for, for driver tiles and sharing it with people in sessions, uh, that turned out to be slightly more complicated. <laughs> So I'm a little bit new to the root creator, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing, obviously, being fresh to all those out there, uh, mm -hmm. would you like to take me through it? Absolutely. So the first thing to mention is we've played this a bunch of times uh, today, so we're not seeing the tutorialization. There is a tutorial that takes you through it, and I will uh, basically do that. You create a route basically by driving. So if you drive out of the gates and go down the hill, and as you go down here, if you just flip the camera back, you'll see that we're driving and creating a route behind us. Like that. Simple as that. Just uh, head down towards the bottom there, and as you go down there, just hit the X button to drop a checkpoint. Now, in the video that uh, uh, our creative director, Ralph, showed you uh, just a few weeks ago, it feels like, you moved checkpoints by 
pressing the left, uh, the left D-pad and the right D-pad to kind of jump them between static positions. And we've completely reworked that. Now you move them around in this very kind of organic way simply by sliding them and then by uh, uh, widening them and narrowing them. It's really quite, um, it's a lot of fun actually. I find myself just sitting and doing this, but that says maybe more about me than, <laughs> than anything else. Uh, cool, so you place the checkpoint there, just uh, take it around the corner. And we're gonna do kind of a, an alternate uh, townhouse uh, rally route here. Uh, so if you just follow the route, uh, follow the road around here, going right, and just drop a couple of checkpoints uh, as, as you go, because it is literally just drive the route, which becomes the racing line, and then place checkpoint. And what you need to think about as you do that is the checkpoints, obviously, players need to go through them. So if you don't put uh, enough down, players can shortcut sections of your route. If you put, uh, if, if, so you can really kind of architect an experience by placing the checkpoints. Are there any rules about uh, how, how you place a checkpoint? How often you have to place a checkpoint? Uh, yes, uh, checkpoints can't be less than 30 meters from each other. They do have a minimum width, which is just wide enough for a car to get through. Uh, so you can place them on one of them. <laughs> so you can place them on viaducts, you can place them, uh, you can place them all over the place, really. Anywhere you can get a car, you can place a checkpoint. And if you just take it, uh, take it right here, so if I was to rewind, uh, so say, say I place a checkpoint and I decide, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want it so, there. Or so I tell you what, just place the checkpoint and go through it, and then rewind. And that, and rewind again, and rewind again, and then there we go, and just hit resume from there, and it erases the route ahead of us. Oh, right, okay. So you it's literally just everything you know with driving well. and rewinding. So just drop a checkpoint when you get back onto the road here. And uh, then we will head up towards uh, the festival and then we'll go along the festival wall. You can just see it up ahead there with uh, the dotted line there. Let's place another one. Yes. Uh, mm. Let's do a little bit mm -hmm. smaller. As so, this is straight, we yep. can get people to fight for the checkpoint. Exactly. And then just take a nice gentle turn around here. Because remember that you're not erasing this, you're drawing it. So if you do a corner that is too aggressive, not only are you going to struggle with doing it, the AI are also going to struggle with doing it. Um, so there's actually a slightly different mindset to uh, creating a route, which is actually thinking uh, about the kind of experience that you want to create. And then later, as we'll see in, in the flow, you get to come back and test it. So it looks like the, the checkpoint on the left there is, is not able to get through the wall. Exactly. What's going on there? And if you, if you pull the checkpoint, if, if you pull them all the way over to the right, you see what happens is it sticks to the car and it moves out. So basically the checkpoints have a minimum width and there are certain objects that they can't pass through. Mm -hmm. And the checkpoint placement just understands that. Uh, and uh, you're going to take it between the houses here through a quite a tight little turn. And then Let's exactly there. And then back around to the uh, right. I would actually just take that checkpoint out. Should we do one further down? Yeah, let's do one further let's down. Let's do one further down. And just let it go through this. Yep. There we go. Let me go back right around the corner. Mm -hmm. So I know we've got a question from the community as well. Uh, these checkpoints, can, does it have to be a full race or does it, can it be point to point? Uh, you can make circuits and you can make point to point routes. Uh, it's entirely up to you. you can just place the checkpoint a little bit further up. What, what are we making at the moment? What we're making here is a, is a circuit. So drop a checkpoint here. And have we chosen up front that it's going to be a circuit? No. Or uh, you, you basically do it by driving it. Uh, so you make a circuit route by driving back to the starting location. In fact, as you go down here, if you just bring up the map once you're through this checkpoint and just zoom in on that, you can see it's showing us the route as we've gone there. We're going to drive back and loop it into the beginning. So you drive back to the gantry and that tells the game that this is going to be a circuit. Great. So that in the top right there, we are 1.7. Is there like a, is there a maximum length that we yes. can route? Yes, uh, 40 miles. 40 miles, 4-0. Four 4-0 zero. Four zero miles, yeah. which, is, uh, which is more than enough uh, for your uh, Leviaths and your Goliaths and your large things. I think the, uh, the current Goliath is 27 miles long. Yeah, so quite a bit longer than current Goliath. Yes. Um, unfortunately for those who uh, love to make money quick, uh, we've, we've fixed that issue where you yes. would get paid five million. So slow down into the corner here. Five seconds. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so actually, if you just break hard into the corner, Take it around here. Just think about drawing a nice light exactly. Just there like we go. Exactly, and back up to the point there. And that will uh, close this and make this a circuit race. A point to point, you basically just press a menu button and you create a point to point by just dropping the end point. So, having driven it uh, and drawn it, now we have to test it. And this is so that we can see how the AI are handling it and how we feel about it. <clears throat> so, now we drop in uh, a pack of uh, 12 cars uh, and now we need to drive it and see how we do. 
So would you say, so we were saying earlier about the, the length of the, that we can do for the races, for creating. Mm -hmm. uh, can you actually go all the way around the map? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And up and down and back and forth and it's all over the place. It's great. So the, the, these guys now, this is AI driver tasks. These are AI driver tasks, yes. And you can, yes, you can see they're handling that, that tight checkpoint there quite nicely. Um, there we go. Yeah, they're, they're doing well. This this whole thing of getting getting these guys to handle. <laughs> <laughs> well, where to go? We're going. This, yes, it's, this it's is a, a bit batty, but that's it's, such a this, bad pun. This, this didn't happen in rehearsals. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you going to start chucking leaves at us? Oh God. Uh, there, there was a talking point here, Mike. What was <laughs> we were talking. I, um, I think uh, we were talking about driver tasks. Yes, we were talking about driver tasks. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that was. That was the thing that, that really was really challenging because they need to understand that they, they need to be close to where the player was driving, but they also shouldn't be plowing through fences. Or oh, anything like I that. forgot. There we go. But you, you can see that that was perhaps not the best corner through there. Uh, it, it, it was a corner that uh, the retro struggled with. Actually, I can go around, well, can't so. I? Exactly, but because, we, because of the way we place the checkpoints, you can actually just zip around it. And that kind of it kind of demonstrates how you need to think about placing checkpoints. Because if you're not careful with how you stick them down, you can actually create routes that can be shortcut. Uh, but that's also a feature, because you don't actually have to. That, 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 yes. <laughs> that's falling apart. So <laughs> <laughs> my, my point before everything started collapsing around us uh, was that um, you don't actually have to have any checkpoints at all. Uh, if you want to make. Uh, uh, a, a race that literally says, go from the festival to Edinburgh however you like. Just start in uh, festival drive to Edinburgh and don't put any checkpoints down. It's like, like a gumball, like a gumball rally it's from the festival. Okay. okay, so we've made the route uh, and now we're going to save it. Uh, so just hit that and give it uh, a name that you will recognize later, which may or may not be Forza, it doesn't matter, we'll fix that. <clears throat> so having done that, we've created a route. The next step is to actually take that and turn it into a blueprint event. Uh, so the flow is linked through here, but you can uh, go to any blueprint of it that you've previously, uh, that you've previously accessed and just add your routes into them. Um, and in so doing, we can actually create uh, a race. In this case, it'll be a, a circuit race. Um, but I'm thinking maybe we change the theme a little bit, maybe make it a different season, change the car that we're driving it in. So if you just set anything goes as the, uh, the car class. Yep. Yeah. Go for that one. Okay, so this is the updated uh, event uh, creation screen. You can see our route has already been selected because we entered it that way. If you just go over to event settings there and then uh, set the season to winter and then you'll see it changes to light snow, of course, a uh, number of laps to one, that's great. So even though the game's currently in spring, you're yeah. able to just change these to whatever Absolutely. season you want. Absolutely. Great. And when you create events, you can either set them, as, as people already know, you can set them to be a specific season or the current season, mm -hmm. whatever that is, mm -hmm. when you join. Right. And what's that saying at the top there? It's currently set to dirt. What, what, right. What uh, so this is, uh, the, if you just tap through those, uh, Retro. Uh, so those are the, the different uh, racing threads that you can associate your custom blueprint event with. So if you, uh, if you want to communicate that this is a dirt race, even though it maybe starts on a, a bit of asphalt, this is the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And this controls uh, where the influence is paid to as well. Great. So I guess an, an automated system there might give unsatisfactory results mm. if you had a route that was 99% asphalt, exactly, but right. a little or bit of gravel. wheels were on and asphalt then. a little bit or yeah, something yeah. like that. So. so late afternoon, that's all good. So let's yep. just fire that up and take a look at it. Okay, so we can obviously give it a name, but we'll just uh, jump in with this as it stands now and uh, give it a test drive and you can see how let's different go. it looks. Call a poster change to winter as well. There we go, let's try this. So uh, Which let's car should we grab pick? Uh, the 2001 Acura maybe. Should we go for that one? You okay. haven't? No, because it's S2, so Owen's got some crazy... Uh, okay, right. Oh, oh, he's, oh, he's been wow. tuning some stuff. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's, let's choose something else then. Okay, let's go right and see what else we've got on here. Is there anything that takes anyone's fancy? What should we go for? I think maybe that, yeah. The RS Turbo, maybe? That one? Yeah, that's a good shout. Let's, yep. go, let's go for that one. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here now is essentially the final step of creating an event blueprint. And you might ask, well, why do I have to test this because I just set all the settings? Well, because you might have made a route that goes across the lake. And you did that in winter. That's cool because it's frozen. 
but then uh, in summer it uh, would obviously not be something that you could complete. So by doing this, you're you're basically just uh, quality controlling uh, the event. So it's like a, a, an anti-trolling feature, I guess. That's something I mean, there is actually another anti-trolling feature built into this, which is after you play a blueprint of it, you can like or need to dislike things. So if you run into stuff that you don't think is particularly good, you can say, no, this isn't any good, and dislike it. OK, great. Um, yes, yeah, so guys, uh, in the next few hours, and possibly even right now, depending on what region you're in, uh, the update for Forza Horizon 4 will be going live. Um, so please, absolutely, get in touch with us through any of our social media channels. Contact Retro Crystal, post on the Forza forums or Reddit. We do read all of those places, so any feedback you have, any new features you want to see added, let us know because we are listening and we are absolutely ready to expand on this feature and add loads of new, uh, loads of new stuff to it going forwards. I think that's one of the, the really great things about, uh, about being uh, alive now with our game and actually having uh, a, a real commitment to, to building and, and expanding on what we've got, that we can look at what's being done and, and bring that in and literally make it an even better game. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, guys, if anyone does want to give any uh, issues, bugs, or further feedback, uh, especially on the Root Creator, you can check out our new support pages. I think the mods will be posting that in chat. Oh, no, the corner again. No, um, <laughs> I hate this but corner. Just, just, just I could have gone around from just, it, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll do that. I'll go around. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, give that a check for any uh, future information, because we do have a look at all them. And like uh, the other said, definitely uh, also the forums. Yeah, so right now, guys, if you check out our Instagram, which is at WeArePlaygroundGames, you'll be able to uh, try, try your hand at winning uh, a code for an exclusive customization item. Uh, also on our Twitter, which is at WeArePlaygroundGames, uh, you have a chance to win an Ultimate Edition code for Forza Horizon 4 if you don't have one already. Or if you do have one already, actually, we're not actually checking. So, um, yes, I mean, if you want to, uh, why not? Then I, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> again maybe says more about me than anything else and, and, and on that note even if you've already bought the game feel free to buy it again uh, <laughs> <laughs> just keep going <laughs> so it, there's a, a, a very logical question which is uh, from uh, rune fires which is how do you create an event that goes across the lake if the current season is not winter well you wait for winter <laughs> wait a few weeks <laughs> yes so the current season that you're in, that is the season that you draw the route in, and then you can blueprint it into different seasons after that. Um, so uh, once we're through this, uh, why don't we go over and actually take a look at making a point to point, maybe over on the highway. Yes, I think that's something to think about, actually. So, uh, well, we should talk, actually, yes, we will. Sure. Um, we should perhaps talk through the uh, <coughs> way that people can share and find these routes mm -hmm. as well on, on the way. Okay, um, great. So I think it'll bring up the, the sharing screen now. Uh, it, it may do. Depends on whether or not we're online. <laughs> uh, oh, yes, of course. So we are actually currently playing uh, on a development build, which is offline. Which, yes, for uh, many, many good reasons. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So I will uh, just head off to the... In yeah, so if you, you head off over there. So I guess it's worth talking about. So when, once people have created their route and they've, they've driven it, they've tested it, we've checked that there's no... Uh, Trolliness in there. Uh, what happens once they share it, Tolman? So, um, it gets put on the server, it's fine. <laughs> so, no, I'm, I'm sorry, that's, that's, that's not a useful answer. Um, it, goes into, uh, it, it goes into the community uh, and it becomes visible on the, uh, in, in, the, in the creative hubs that are in the game. And there are a number of different tabs there. Obviously, newest is newest. Um, best today, best this week, uh, stuff that we'll pick. So if, you're, if, you're, if you've made something that you think is really cool, uh, feel free to tweet it at one of us and uh, uh, it may end up being featured as uh, something that goes into the game uh, and is available to everyone uh, through the uh, PG, uh, PG Recommends tab. Also, of course, you can go to anyone's uh, creative hub and actually uh, uh, see uh, the routes that they've created from that. Something for, for, for the real uh, root creators out there who really want to to, uh, to create great stuff. It's a way for you to just kind of uh, showcase that. Yeah, I think, it, I, mean, it's, I think it's one of the great things. Uh, like this morning, if you booted up Forza Horizon 4 and you drove over to Tarn House, mm -hmm. um, there was one route there. You could just race Tarn House. And you could tweak the settings a little bit, but it was just Tarn House. Tomorrow morning, when you drive over to that, that start location, there can be <laughs> tens of thousands of routes um, that are just available for you to, to check out and enjoy. And there's no, no friction at all there. There's, as, as soon as someone uploads it, it's available for you to play. So, but there's, there's actually a, a, a ranking system running behind the scenes, which is uh, 
which is another, another one of these complex things that seem simple on, on the surface. But uh, based on a combination of likes and dislikes and plays, uh, we actually rank content uh, so that you should see uh, good stuff first in the various lists. Yeah, and moving forward as well, um, uh, once people have created these routes and uploaded them to, to our servers, uh, it allows us as developers to pick those off the servers and then reuse them in other areas of the game. So if you create a great route, you might then see that in one of our seasonal championships in an upcoming season, uh, maybe in a, a team adventure championship as well. Um, we have a, a whole suite of uh, updates uh, coming to team adventure over the next few months, um, all of which I think you'll be, you, you'll be, you should be very much looking forward to, but I think the, the, the ability for us to add these new routes is, is something that I'm really looking forward to because it just gives the gives game legs and legs to keep on being different every single time you play. Absolutely. So we've got a question uh, from someone in the community called uh, Older Robot. So we want to know, can you follow track creators, you know, like you do with tuners? I mean, I know a lot of the community out there have their favourites, mm -hmm. uh, especially, you know, livery designers. Mm -hmm. uh, a few of them actually, going back to the Forza RC, uh, I managed to talk to two of them. Uh, but yeah, would people be able to do that? Absolutely. I mean, the, there's lots of opportunities to follow uh, particular people and then uh, see uh, what they've updated and what they've added in. Uh, so, you sounded like you had an idea for what we might do on the highway? Yeah, so I think the... the are, we, are, we, are we in a route now? Yes. Or, we're, sorry, yeah. Um, I think one of the things that the route creator allows uh, players to do is, is to create those kind of routes that, that we wouldn't make as developers. So when we're making a route, we kind of have to think about, oh, can you drive it in most of the cars or all of the cars? Um, is it going to be fun in all the cars? And it kind of, for us, adds some element of limitations on the kind of routes we can create. Mm -hmm. um, in the route creator, though, for you, when you're making it for yourself, for your friends, for the community, you, you don't have those limitations. So, for example, you could take whatever the fastest car in your garage is, set a route that runs the full length of the motorway, and then, and then have at it and have a race where you and all your friends are driving at 270 miles an hour down the motorway for several minutes. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of route that we probably wouldn't make for the games. It's a standard. And this car really, really, really accelerates out the gate. <laughs> why have you picked this car? I have no <laughs> idea why I picked this car. <laughs> well, actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm going to show some of the, the, the freedom of Root Creator. Who needs roads? Who needs roads? So this is the point where people have to start driving this route. OK, and there's going to be traffic here, I think. Uh, oh, no, no, that'd be no, okay. No, not, during, not during the recuperation process. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, that's right. We switched that off because of the, the awful things. <laughs> because then, you're, then your racing line would have to drive around the traffic, which perhaps isn't what you want. No. This, this looks like there's some real peril in this car, I think, if you... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Does that do that thing? It's like, I, I would... I, I, I'm, yes. There are some cars in our game where it's literally terrifying to upgrade them all the way and then just floor it. Yeah. I must admit, one of my favourite things is, uh, speaking about speeds of cars, I've seen one where uh, people would put the car near, you know, the, the train and just walk, like, let the train hit the car and just watch it like, go at like, mm -hmm. 700 miles per hour. I'm just like, OK. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a great history of, uh, of, of exploring kind of those physics edge cases in, uh, in, in the Horizon games. It's wonderful. So, All right, shall we call it? So I will drop my final checkpoint there. Place finish line. Great. And that becomes the end of the race. And you've got to race it again in that car now? Yes. All right. <laughs> yes, so that'll be uh, fun. <laughs> <laughs> OK, but I'm going to be up against other cars as well, so I'd, bet, I'd best... Uh, What's the highest speed this goes up to? Too fast, I think. <laughs> this, this, too fast. Yeah, this car looks like it's topping out at around 200, which is actually nowhere near as fast as some cars can go in the game. Uh, like some of these ones, it seems. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got an image of someone doing like a race, but literally putting the checkpoints like really thin and just like, mm -hmm. so you've got to zigzag straight mm -hmm. down. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it, is absolutely, like... it is absolutely possible to make a terrible, terrible route. <laughs> there is. <laughs> I think yeah. so that's you know one of the best parts about this. You so you can personalise it to however you want, and you know we want that. We want uh, you as uh, whether it be creators, whether it just be players, whether it be teams that just want to kind of like troll their friends or just make a funny race. Mm -hmm. You can do that, and that's you know, and that's part of the immersion of the gameplay. 
And something like this uh, is, is definitely something that would really work well with people who really want to tune their cars to the absolute limit of, of, of what's possible. Because uh, that's, it's always more satisfying to beat players who tune their cars mm. to the absolute limit than it is to race against uh, drive cars, I find. Even though I generally get beaten. <laughs> <coughs> and that was that. And then you'd save that and create an event, and exactly as we've seen previously. You used to do that, but zigzag it and do it in the peel. That's what I want. <laughs> uh, someone, someone make that and tweet at us. I mean, Actually, if, yeah, anybody so saw, if, if anybody saw our, our, our launch day stream, they will have seen us, <laughs> seen our efforts to make the peel drive in a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> so, if, so if someone does make that race, uh, definitely tweet it, tweet it to us. To uh, we are playground because I will definitely give that a try. In fact, maybe we'll do some of that the next time we have a live stream. Yeah, I think that'd be a great thing, actually. Uh, next time we do one of these live streams, which will probably be in about four weeks, it'd be really great if we could, uh, I, I guess, have a look on the community, see what great routes people have made, and then show them off to the whole world. Mm -hmm. So get creating and let us know when you've created something special. Yeah, fantastic. So um, I'm just driving, uh, yeah, this is something that I find myself doing just, even when I'm supposed to be sitting at my desk and working, just driving around in, 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 in this game. Do you, ever speak to, uh, do you ever stick to the speed limit? Yeah. Like, have you ever done that? <laughs> oh, right, yes, no. Uh, I don't know why people do that, though. <laughs> I, 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 I wouldn't do that every day. I wouldn't suggest we do it now, but oh, like, no. yeah, pretending you're a traffic car uh, can be a, a really weird experience. Like, you do see some, especially in an actual connected session as well, because you see everyone else not pretending they're traffic cars, and it, adds, <laughs> and it just really uh, shines a light on the slight absurdity of the entire ride of festival and all the people out there doing all their uh, slightly dangerous activities. That's great. So, I mean, that's, uh, that's the update. It's rolling out uh, across the globe as we speak. Yes. Um, and uh, that's uh, an entirely new story, 10 chapters of uh, some fantastic and pretty quirky British cars uh, across a bunch of marks. Uh, and this uh, route creator feature, which is, I mean, I am really looking forward to seeing what people come up with once they've really dug their teeth into it and started thinking about what it means to create routes and think about uh, overtake passages and all of the kinds of things that we think about when we're designing races. I'm really interested in seeing um, not only how the routes are made, but mm. how people actually race the routes. Because mm. like we were saying earlier, you can take shortcuts, which, <coughs> you know, you kind of work in your favour if you know a lot of people that are going to mm -hmm. do your race or you create, you know, if you create an event yourself with your friends mm -hmm. or you all try this race and only you know the shortcut, it, it'll be quite interesting to see, you know, the battle of uh, first place. And you can, you can actually design those strategies into it by, by creating checkpoints on each side of a forest, for example. And then there will be whatever line the player took to go through, but, spoiler alert, that could be lying. It could be taking a long route all the way around the forest when the fastest route has actually just been it through. And if you make it through, it's good. So guys, uh, if you're watching now, uh, feel free to ask us any questions you may have on in the chat. Uh, they can be about route creator, they can be about anything Forza Horizon 4 related. Uh, we will do our best to answer them. Uh, as I've mentioned a couple times already, if you check out our social media channels on Instagram and Twitter, there is a whole bunch of stuff that you can win, so uh, check those out, but keep, keep watching us while you do it. Um, uh, and I'm discovering how hard it is to drive a car when you've got studio lights burning <laughs> straight into your face. <laughs> <laughs> I can kind of see shapes moving. So, do you think it is worth um, maybe doing another chapter of Red Racing Green? Sure. I'm uh, more than happy to do that. Um, let us... Are we going to fast travel? We're going to fast travel. Uh, for those we're, that... We found our way on the, right the way across to the opposite side of the map. So. Yeah, I was going to say definitely fast travel. For those that uh, <laughs> are interested in fast travel, I do see this come up a lot. People actually don't know there is a specific house in the game where if you buy that house, you can just fast travel wherever you want. Or you can do what I did and try to, to attempt all the fast travel boards before getting annoyed because there's one on top of the church. And I found out that apparently if you do more danger signs, because I know some people don't know how to get there, if you do a few more danger signs, it unlocks the ramp. And then you can destroy that uh, that board, and then a lot of fast travel. Mm -hmm. Well, cheaper fast travel. So uh, there's a lot of people in the chat asking about the bug with barn finds. I did mention this earlier on, but I guess some people joined late. Uh, so we know about an issue uh, that's in the game right now, where some players who find all the barn finds uh, don't have the achievement pop, which we can appreciate is really frustrating. Uh, we are working on that issue, and uh, although it won't be fixed in the CU that's going live as we speak. Uh, the next update should have a solution to that issue, which will hopefully make that achievement pop for you. 
Don't forget, if anyone does want updates on our uh, like release notes or fixes, you can find them on our support page. We do have all the lists, or they are on sticky threads in the forums. Thank you. Uh, I see there's a question about being able to edit and delete blueprints. So something to clarify here. Uh, like any other game with UGC creation in it, once you uh, complete and share your blueprint event, it is on the server. And from that point forward, can no longer be edited or deleted. And the reasoning for that is basically uh, it prevents situations where uh, someone creates something really awesome and then we feature it and then suddenly there's something offensive in it because it got edited after we featured it. That kind of thing uh, is the reason why um, almost no one else does it. And it's true of our own, our own little as well, liveries yes. and tunes. You yes. have to, you, you have to, well, you, you, have to, <coughs> you, can, you, can, you can delete those, but... Mm. Um, you can't. You can't. You certainly can't edit it once it's mm. been uploaded. And everyone who has downloaded it has the has the version of it that they downloaded. Yes. But I mean, this is a, a, li a living game uh, for, for 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 some value of living, um, and we're obviously watching how the feature gets used, and that will inform what we do with it moving forward. Um, so I mean, there are there are a number of uh, chapters here. Um, anyone have a British a favourite car mark that we should look at? Ooh. Well, I, I, oh, you go on. Uh, I'm just, I'm, you'll, you'll be more familiar with me. Which ones are not like super long? Because I don't, I don't want us to have to. Uh, that one is not super long at all. <laughs> this, I, this is retro. Oh, is this? Ah, uh, uh, okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, swoosh, Ian. Uh, is there a fix incoming for the season, seasonal PR stunt problem? I.e., if you've already been the target. Um, yes, we are looking into this, um, and I think um, you probably won't see it again actually for a long time anyway. This was caused by us uh, having a having a, cha a challenge be reused, you know, so it would be a, a, really like one that appeared car. in a previous week, Not which we're just going to try not to do uh, until we've got a solution to that problem. It's the peel. I love this car way too much, too for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, so those who follow nice. Retro's channel on Mixer <laughs> will have uh, <laughs> seen a lot of her really high quality content uh, making use of this car. Okay, yeah. just zoom so around this. you have to hit Oh my god, how slow is it? I tuned mine. Mine goes like 200 miles per hour. This is so slow. You have to hit a speed trap at at least 35 miles an hour. Wow, okay. Yes. I think my windscreen wiper goes quicker than this. <laughs> it's, a good job it's, a, it's a really good job it's downhill, I think. <laughs> yes. you, know what, you know what the question is? Why is it red? Where's the, where's the Kinder Egg livery? I'm disappointed. There's no Kinder Egg livery. I have mine on one of those like, Smoby children's cars. Oh, the Fisher Price ones. Yeah, yeah I have seen them. Uh, I think one of our members did a Mr. Bump one as well. One of our staff. A Mr. Bump. Bump, yeah, from Mr. Man. Oh, right, okay, okay. sorry, sorry. <laughs> right. my, my kids are too young. I, 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 I was thinking Mr. Tumble. Ah, oh, oh, there you go. Three stars, downhill. Tom Osprey's a big Mr. Tumble fan. Shout out to the Peel. Okay, so um, there's a question about uh, the uh, community choice car mm -hmm. uh, that we're doing uh, this series or this update. Um, so the way that's going to work is uh, during the autumn week, uh, we will be posting a poll on uh, our Twitter feed where uh, people will be able to vote for one of the four cars from the previous season. Uh, and the one that gets the most votes will go into the Volkswagen shop for winter. So there's one of those cars that you missed. Uh, I, I, I'll try not to... Oh, so we're getting the wheel spin. Sorry. I get excited about wheel spins. Yes. <laughs> watch your feet. Watch your feet. Ah. Oh. It's all right. Yes. I'll take that. You didn't, you, you didn't have to verbalise your disappointment after <laughs> my previous comments. Well, that wasn't a good car. <laughs> hey, 25 is better than five. I've had five before. Um, so on the, on the uh, subject of cars coming up, we've got... Um, so obviously in Forza Horizon 3, we did a Hot Wheels expansion. Mm -hmm. uh, we have coming up uh, two 50th anniversary versions of Hot Wheels cars. We've got the Twin Mill mm -hmm. and the Bone Shaker. I think one of those is Fort Stan and one of those is a yes. season event reward yes. because season event rewards are fixed now, so you will actually unlock them when you complete the season event. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and the other one is, it's a new version of the, uh, the Hoonicorn, isn't it? The Ken, Ken Block Hoonicorn, yes. yeah. So those ones will be available over the next few weeks as well in Fort Stan and or season events, so uh, keep an eye out for those as well as mm -hmm. the uh, community choice one that Tobin was just telling us about. Yes. Park it. Okay. Okay. That is not parking. So those asking for more details about what the car audio changes are. Oh my um, god, why is this car doing? Because we, it has way too much acceleration. We will be sharing full details of that uh, as soon as we can. There we um, go. I don't, I don't want to get, I don't want, I don't want to mislead anybody, and I don't have the exact details to hand. So um, 
yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at getting the actual specific changes there out to you so you can check those out. Uh, I'm sure before we've done that, um, some of you guys will have done a teardown and put a YouTube video up uh, checking out those changes for yourselves. So I look forward to seeing that, that video anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see if I can handle this. So I'm going to park, park your car in the dirt. Uh, whoa! Okay. I'd help if I don't. Yes, Let's that... just rewind. Let's rewind. I wasn't paying attention to the AI. I was looking at my time. Yes. This is I, where I, you're keeping an eye on the roads at all times. Yes, I, I think in, in a car like that, so the, the moment you stop paying attention to the road is the, is the moment you're in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times I've done like a like a free run rush or a, a race, and I I cut across fields like all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I have no patience for roads. So I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna go straight across and try to. It's literally a game of will we hit a tree or not, and that is the that's the definition between like 12th place or first place. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like the standing joke in, 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 in Horizon is uh, uh, take the second uh, exit from the, the roundabout, it means go straight through. <laughs> yeah, you think that, don't you? Some of them really catch you out there. There's a few with like a yes. big stone monolith <laughs> in the middle. It's like, <laughs> I go straight through, or I, no, no, no. I've, I've ruined oh. everything. <laughs> Get time to rewind. Okay, so park it there. Oh, I didn't, that was not okay. a Okay, a question from fun. Geezer Funny, um, which is, what are your favourite areas of the map? Uh, Torben, do you want to go first? I think it's actually that section up through the middle of the Cotswolds into the Lakehurst Forest where we drove the minis. Mm. Uh, there's something about that combination of asphalt and dirt that is, and tight turns. I, I love that. I'm trying to think my favourite bit. So I did actually really like the Lake Street that we went through beforehand. Uh, although one of my favourite areas, which I didn't think I'd like it, like compared to the rest, was um, when you do the showcase with the, the, the Great Scotsman train. The fact of like the way you're just going down the hill with the music. The music is like, uh, I think it's the Hall of the Mountain King. Mm -hmm. And it really like gets you going and the whole area and watching it all. And yeah, I sort of visually and um, I'm a big fan of all the slow-mo jumps in certain races and the showcases. Uh, yeah, it's definitely one of my favourite areas. I also had the Halo showcase mm -hmm. as well. The Halo showcase. Well, yes. I think that's yours. Uh, so like very, very, that very, very, very dear to my heart. Um, yeah, I think my favourite area of the world is uh, Bamba Beach, which is actually, yeah. all, the, all the reference for that beach was taken to the beach that I used to go to as a kid, um, and it's eerily similar. Like, you, you go along there, it just gives me so much uh, nostalgia of uh, visiting that beach as a kid, so, uh, yeah, I think that's my favourite area. Uh, I think a lot of people on the team have that effect as well, where we've modelled areas of the game over places where they grew up or places they knew as a kid, and and now just have a really warm, nostalgic feeling that every, every time they go there. Yeah. Um, so there's a question here about, uh, about Halloween clothes and how uh, people will be getting them. They'll be in the shop and they will be uh, rewards for seasonal championships. They won't be in wheelspin uh, for some time. Yeah, um, so yeah, that, as we were saying earlier, if you want to get those things, if you want to get that creepy clown mask or the, uh, the, pumpkin. the, the, cool, day, the cool Day of the Dead t-shirts and what have you, um, then you need, to, you need to make sure you get those during the Halloween party <coughs> events. Uh, so that's joining our special Fort Sun challenges and our season events, uh, because they'll be going away for a little while after that. They will come back in wheelspin, um, and as Sith Darth Vader says, he's afraid that they will flood the wheelspin. Um, they will not change the chances of you getting cars and credits, which, as I said earlier, you still have uh, a better chance of getting large money and a better chance of getting awesome cars than you did in Horizon 3. So even with the addition of those items, uh, you're better off than you were in our previous game. Uh, I think to just recap on that point, and I hope you feel like we have been uh, responding to your questions in the chat. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be trolling through it after the stream as well, making notes of all the feedback points you guys have given us. Um, we're always listening. We are always making changes to the game. Um, I think we'll probably try and get a message out with some of the upcoming fixes we've got as well. With, mm -hmm. um, there's some going live right now, which you'll be experiencing in the next few hours, and there's some coming uh, imminently after that as well, which we will let you know about and keep you informed. Um, so that's changes to team adventure, rivals, things like that. If you've, if you've been posting our forums on Reddit, you can rest assured that, that we are hearing you. Yes. All right, we are just about out of time. So mm -hmm. if we uh, let Retro finish this. Oh, uh, oh. I'll just go <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, Retro's not going to finish this. But guys, don't worry. <laughs> you, can, you can finish that for yourselves in the next few hours. Um, Oh, so, yes. <laughs> thanks very much for tuning in to the Forza Horizon 4 <laughs> Update 2 live wow. stream. Uh, I've been Mike Brown. This is Retro Crystal, Torben Ella, hey, and um, Batman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was going to call it Fang. <laughs> we'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. Take care.
So as part of our behind the scenes look at all the cool stuff that's happening here at Goodwood, where we've got a real world rally course that's been themed around each of the four seasons represented in the game. We are currently starting off in autumn, which is obviously the season you start off the game in. And we've got all this great autumn mist billowing around us at the moment. We're going to go and have a look at what's happening in winter next. It's actually a gorgeous day. It's really hot. Everybody's getting sunburnt wearing Factor 50, including me. But as you can see, this section of the course looks almost entirely like it does in our game. Everything's covered in snow and it makes everything look amazing. We are now in the spring section. All the bluebells are out, the daffodils are out over here. Winter is literally just behind us, which is obviously where we just were. But obviously we want to see what's ahead now as well. So let's go and check it out. Come on. So I'm wearing a ridiculous hat. I have a lovely beach ball here as well, and the sun is blinding me, which means I must be in summer. And what I'm gonna do now is chill out and contemplate how I can turn this amazing walk and behind the scenes look into a, an actual experience in one of those rally cars uh, for real. So uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. Tanner Faust here. I've spent the whole morning driving rally cars through stages. In fact, just drove through four seasons in less than 500 yards. I think I saw Ben asleep out on a bench chair somewhere in the summer section, but it's been an epic morning of driving every toy under the sun here at Goodwood. But there's one thing I have not tried, the hovercraft. 